Our CAA Summer School Series continues today, presented by Cannon, with the head coach of the Northeastern Huskies, Bill Cohen. Coach, uh, first of all, thank you for joining us. And, and how have you been, your family, everyone in your inner circle during this uh, COVID-19 pandemic? Yeah, th thanks so much for having me, Bobby. We're, we're, we're making out just fine, uh, just like everybody else. Uh, trying to hang in there on a on a day to day, kind kind of control what you can control and uh, stay positive and and try to be productive in a very challenging and unprecedented time. And coach, you just said it there, trying to stay positive, but in light of the COVID nineteen, if you can make light of it at all, what what things have you been doing during the off season that maybe you wouldn't have been able to tend to in the past? Have you been able to get into any type of the? I know Netflix series have been big for people, or into a new book, or anything yeah. in regards to that. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I think that's that's kind of been the silver lining. It's almost been like a, a professional sabbatical. Um, it has been so much great. I, th I think really proud of the, b the basketball community, the international basketball community on how uh, everybody's been willing to share the game. And there's been so many uh, great productions online, uh, webinars and, and clinics and so on, uh, NABC and international coaches and really had a, a deep dive in that. And that's been, that's been uh, inspiring and, and uh, rejuvenating, you know, when anytime you can learn and grow like that, um, and you know, been doing doing some reading. Obviously, uh, read, read Sprawl Ball uh, about NBA analytics, and and a couple of other mentoring and leadership books. Um, one in particular, The Obstacle Is the Way, and I think it's really relevant to our to our times right now. Very challenging times, but it's a way to stay positive in the face of adversity, and and how you can turn you know challenges in, into opportunities. And uh, it's a great leadership book. That's great. And coach, you, you talked about adversity just now. What have been some of the challenges you have faced during this off season with the pandemic? You know, I think, uh, you, you know, everybody strives um, in every organization is to stay connected to one another. And when you have to be physically distanced, uh, that's, that's been a challenge without, you know, summer access to our players um, really to be able to get, get to uh, grow the team together and start out with a foundation, really challenging. But we've been, you know, been doing, uh, you, you know, periodic weekly, biweekly um, Zoom calls, uh, checking in with guys, either with text or phone calls, doing our best to, to electronically stay connected. Um, and I think that's been the biggest challenge with our team. Um, and I think every, everybody's kind of facing it who uh, isn't performing summer access. And coach your team. Uh, what is what are the days and weeks and months up ahead uh, that m maybe you visioned or, or trying to map out right now in regards to either seeing your team? Have you seen your team? But what type of workouts do you plan on doing once you guys get together? Uh, how do you see the? Net? I know it's hard to kind of see that far in the future, but how do you see your your few first few interactions with your team mapping out here? Yeah, well, we're due back on campus, uh, you know, first week of September. So our guys will be coming back. Um, you know, Northeastern has done a tremendous job at laying out the protocols on how, you know, this is going to play out. It's going to be challenging, but I have, I have a lot of confidence in our administration. Uh, they put in some great testing measurements and, and protocols throughout campus to keep everybody safe. So we'll, we'll get together uh, then, and then we'll go through a series of obviously some COVID testing and, 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 um, and then work, hopefully work into some small groups at some point in time when, when the medical experts say that's clear and, and hopefully prepare for, for a great, great season. We're still, you know, obviously awaiting news from the NCA and so on and what, what's going to be available, but we're, we're hoping that we'll, we'll have CAA basketball this year. And coach, uh, speaking of the NCA, the NCA tournament, uh, is, is, a tournament that you've been in a few times now in, in the past few years. Uh, last year, returning to the CA championship for the third consecutive season. What's the message to the team this year as you look for another NCA tournament appearance? Yeah, thanks, Brad. I think every team in the country, you know, starts out with the same goals in mind, and and for us, it it, it doesn't really change year to year. It's first and foremost, uh, you know, we want to handle uh, our non-conference schedule and have some success in that area. Um, we want to make sure that we uh, we're competing for for a regular season CAA title. Um, there's, I think there's nothing greater than that, you know, to be uh, 
to go head to head against everybody in the league and, and come out on top at the end of the year. So we, we set that as a goal each and every year. And then we also um, set as a goal to win the, the CAA tournament um, and, and win a championship there and, and get yourself to the NCAA tournament because I think it, that's everybody's lifelong dream in college basketball. And um, like you said, fortunately, we've been able to do it uh, the last three years to get into that championship game, and it's really, really exciting for our guys. But our message is the same each and every year. In fact, we've been to the championship game four of the last six and five of the last eight years. Um, so I think, you, you you know, the guys on the team um, not only are accountable to themselves but accountable to the coaches, but also accountable to the players that have come before in the program. And they know that, as you know, they got a lot of pride in, in this particular team and they want to make sure that they keep the tradition going and give us an opportunity to play in postseason and in, in, in the NCAA. Coach, you just spoke of uh, players before on these past championship teams. CA fans over the years have gotten to know the names of Vasa Pushitsa, Bold Embrace, and, and Jordan Rowland. Who are some of the players fans should keep their eye on this season that they might not have been seen in starring roles before? I think, you, you know, you have to start with, uh, you know, a couple of guys that had, you know, really performed well for us uh, last year in their roles, and that's – Tyson Walker and, and Shaquille Walters. I mean, both those guys, uh, you know, had very good years. Shaq really came on at the end of the year and kind of um, had, had a, I thought, thought a breakout February where he kind of, you know, hit a stride and hit, gained some confidence, and which led into the CA tournament. But those two guys are going to have to play at a high level. And then some of our, our older guys, um, like Jason Strong, who's been in the program, is going to get opportunity and. Greg Boyd Bedeen is going to have to step up and play a, a bigger role, uh, but really for the key for us is that our, you know, our, our juniors and uh, sophomores are going to have to play like seniors, and our freshmen are going to have to play like juniors and sophomores. Uh, we have to play at a very mature level. We got a young group, and um, you know, as you said, we had some roster turnover. But I think, you know. Quite frankly, I think the whole league has had a significant amount of roster turnover, so it should be an exciting year in the CAA. And that leads right into my next question, Coach. Uh, the CA had some roster turnover, a lot of great players. I mean, we're seeing them in the NBA bubble right now, players that you've coached against. Uh, what is the landscape of the league going into this year? Yeah, I, I think it's going to be really, really exciting, Bobby. I, you know, I think we lost probably eight of the top ten scorers in the league. Um, but, but I, I really believe that, you know, every program has a reason to be excited uh, from top to bottom. There's some really great things uh, going on at each every program. I think you can never be surprised if, if, if Hofstra or, or, or Towson and, or, or, or Charleston, because of their, their, their uh, experienced coaching staffs, um, you know, if they jumped up and, and, and won a championship. You know, I think before roster uh, – uh, you know, transfer portal hit in and so on things. Uh, I think Delaware would have been uh, the preseason favorite uh, in, in our league, but I think there are a lot of other teams kind of poised to make a, a great jump. Um, I thought, you know, two, two first year coaches uh, last year, uh, you, you know, Dane and Mike uh, did an unbelievable job um, and they had their programs positioned uh, really well. I think Drexel probably has – has balanced the lineup coming back and a veteran guard and a veteran big and um, some really, really experienced players. So I think Drexel's poised for a move. And then you got some new coaches coming, coming into the league and um, you, you know, some familiar faces, but I, I think the, 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 the roster down at Wilmington was really young roster, you know, and I think it's built for speed and uh, you know, I think that's going to be the new style of play down there kind of, um, going back to Kevin Keats days and so on. Um, and then you got, you know, Matt Lewis at JMU and, uh, you know, he's the leading returning scorer in the league. And anytime you got the best player, uh, you, you know, going to give yourself a chance with an experienced um, and battle tested coaching staff. So I can't really handicap the league. Um, you know, new guys are going to jump up. Some, there are going to be new names, uh, you know, leading scorers in the league. Not really sure what programs are going to come from, but, I think it's going to be a really exciting year. And we look forward to it indeed, Coach. And, and what does it say about the league? You know, I mentioned it in regards to 
you know, players playing at the next level. We saw, you know, Drell Brantley have a big night the other night. We see Devontae Kaycock playing for the Lakers and, and just – and other players being drafted from the CAA over the past few years. And, and now we possibly could have some more players playing at the next level coming up in the NBA draft in October. Uh, what does it say about the league as a whole when, when you get to see – players in this league play at the next stage on that national stage. Yeah, I, I, you, you know, it validates what, you, you know, coaches in the league and players in the league have known for years, how, how, how good the competition is in the CAA. And I think it's, it's, been, it's been recognized, um, you know, on the professional levels, like you've said, and it's so, you know, it's such a great sense of pride uh, to, to, to watch, you, you know, those guys, Darrell Brantley and Devontae Kaycock go out there and do their thing uh, at, at, on the biggest stage. But I, th- I think, you, you know, the whole bubble experience has been really, really good for mid-major basketball. When you see, you know, CJ McCollum and, and uh, Damian Lillard do their thing and, and John Morant. I mean, it's, it's really good players come from, from a lot of different levels, but, you know, the CAA in particular, and I think the future is really bright. And speaking of the future, the cliche is that players experience their biggest growth from freshman to sophomore year, and you you touched on Tyson Walker a little bit, but what have you seen from him to kind of reinforce that? Yeah, I I believe that statement's true. I think, you know, the growth period, when you come in, you you kind of have blind confidence. You really don't know what you don't know. And and sometimes that's, that's, uh, you know, that's an asset because you're not overthinking the game and playing. But if you really want to kind of progress and, and, uh, and be, become the best you can be, you have to master the mental side of it. I think the growth area, that's where it comes in. You, you kind of know what the challenges are. You know the rhythm. You know the demands of the season. Um, and you become more professional in, in your approach, you, the way you attack practice, the way you prepare for games, the way you, you manage yourself off the court. Um, you, you, know, you really kind of – uh, conserve your energy for all the most important things. And, and that's where I think I've seen the biggest grow, growth in Tyson. Obviously he had a, he had a great year for us. Um, you, you know, and I think that's the toughest position to transition into the point guard position as a college freshman. Um, but you know, he did an outstanding job for us, but his maturity and the way he's kind of gone off this postseason and attacked the game from a mental side is really going to put himself in position for another, another great season for us. Wrapping up today with the head coach of the Northeastern Huskies, Bill Cohen. And, Coach, uh, uh, another offseason headline has been the social injustice movement and Black Lives Matter. What conversations around your team have you guys had concerning the social injustice movement and Black Lives Matter? Yeah, I, I think, uh, you, you, know, you know, we're really at a pivotal time in history in this country. And, um, you know, it was, it was uh, so unfortunate. Um, all the events that led up to it was Ahmaud Arbery or, or George Floyd. But, you, you know, I, I think, um, you know, and I'll, I'll, I'll borrow a couple of terms that my, my good friend over at Harvard, uh, Tommy Amaker, I'm on the NABC board with him. And when he first came up and we had a, a board call, he used uh, the term 2020. And, you know, it's the year we're living in. It's the year that all these events are occurring. But it's also kind of synonymous with clear, clear and perfect vision. And, um, and I think a lot of people around the country are, are really kind of awakening um, to all this, the, the social and, and racial injustice that's been going on in this country for way too long. Um, but as a team, you know, we, we got together and talked about it. Uh, we brought in Mark Washington, who's a former player for us, uh, you know, he's a, he's a police officer. He's black. He's from Louisiana and had a really kind of powerful conversation within the team. Um, our athletic director, Jeff Goni has really taken um, this matter very, very serious and tried to implement some t- changes and put together some, um, some committees uh, involving our student athletes. We've had town halls with our student athletes. Our president has taken this serious. And another thing that Tommy said, and to use a basketball term, is play from the inside out. And I think, you know, change has got to come within your locker room. Uh, education has to come. We're, we're all institutions of higher learning. Um, we have to be instruments of, 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 of education and get people to understand the issues at hand. And then we got to get action steps. Um, 
you know, for us, we, 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 we've gotten all our guys registered to vote. Um, you know, we're behind that initiative. Uh, we're supporting the NABC initiative with um, the minority uh, internship uh, initiative by uh, the, the, there's a subcommittee, the NABC started with racial re reconciliation and Tommy Amaker's on there, John Calipari's on that. But you may have seen it. Uh, they, they supported and scholarship a bunch of interns, um, black interns that are working athletic departments to try to say, change the face of athletics. So a lot of positive uh, change is coming out of these dreadful situations. And I think the most positive thing that I've had is through interaction with the younger uh, people on our team and in our on our campus, where you see the positive energy for change. Um, you know, this generation isn't going to tolerate it. And, you know, it's, it's, it's the time is now, you know, time, time, change has to happen. Coach Bill Cohen of Northeastern Huskies, uh, thank you for sharing uh, your insight in regards to the social justice movement. And, and thank you for sharing what's been going on this summer with the Huskies and your program. And I uh, hope you stay safe along with your team and family. And uh, hopefully we see you guys on the court fairly soon. Yeah, I hope we see everybody in person soon. And everybody, please stay safe, wear a mask so we can, so we can get back to uh, doing things we all love. But appreciate you having me on and, and go Huskies. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Coach. Have a great day. You too.